So I just wanted to talk a little bit about my journey and the 12 steps and A Course in Miracles and also um, uh, how that allowed me to experience, mm, uh, experience life and, and my journey through spirituality. And I sort of, um, initially I was working in the uh, stock market and had major addictions, food addiction and workalism, had, a, had an inflated ego. And, um, uh, and then what happened was uh, all that ego inflation led to me getting kidney failure uh, and being in the Royal Free Hospital. I rushed to the Royal Free Hospital facing death. And I had a spirit, you know, facing death when the doctors were trying to save my life. Uh, I surrendered and I had a, a mystical spiritual experience, had any time of spiritual experience. I was uh, released from the hospital and uh, released from the hospital and then uh, I, was, uh, I also had a voice in the, uh, I had a voice uh, say to me in that spiritual experience, the heavenly time of spiritual experience, find a spiritual solution. So uh, I went to all these spiritual places looking for where I'd find this spiritual solution to save my life. And I was given a DVD of a guy called Dr. David R. Hawkins and uh, I later found out he was one of the sp uh, sponsees of a man called Bill Wilson, uh, who founded uh, one of the founders of the 12 step movement. Uh, and he was also a teacher of enlightenment. And I had a spiritual experience when I was given his DVD. I had what I call Kundalini experience, like a tingling up the spine. So I knew he'd be one of my teachers, because at the time I had kidney failure and suffering from addiction. And also, um, I was also introduced by the guy who gave me the DVD to a spiritual teacher called Muji, who was also another t teacher of enlightenment. These two teachers of enlightenment were introduced to me. But in terms of um, uh, Dr. Hawkins' work and studying his work, I found out that the 12 steps groups um, are at a unique um, vibration which counteracts addiction. You know, it's a vibration of unconditional love, and so if I'd go to, to those groups, they would, um, they would uh, release um, uh, my addictive tendencies. And also, but also, um, he talked about the Course in Miracles. And uh, I had kidney failure, uh, uh, you know, kidney failure and severe health problems at the time, uh, extreme health problems. And he'd recovered doing the Course in Miracles from 23 illnesses. You know, and he even ran a group for people with serious, serious uh, life-threatening illnesses. And people there recovered from things like AIDS and, and cancer and lysis growth. So I was very interested, and he, from his journey, I was very interested in doing these two things. But he explained, you know, like, when you're deep in addiction, you have a very inflated ego. You're very cut off from the light of God. So, you know, I was very, I was very identified with my physical body. And uh, I had, a, you know, my head was going at 100 miles an hour all the time, and uh, so, so I knew I was around the bottom, and I was full of cloaked in fear. I had this huge cloak of fear, but I knew that uh, I went to the 12 steps. Uh, I went to a, a fellowship that dealt with food issues, which was my major addiction, uh, and then. Uh, Got a, got a mentor, their sponsor, and that really solved that. But I knew that that would get me up from those low ego vibrations, vibrating at, you know, the ego vibrations are things like, a really dense ego vibration would be like, you, your main resonance is shame. Yeah, and then, you know, or if you're making progress, your main resonance, you know, up from shame, a higher, slightly higher vibration would be guilt, a slightly higher ego vibration would be fear. Uh, a slightly higher vibration than fear would be anger. A uh, slightly higher vibration than anger would be pride. So I learnt those were all, you know, there's even grades of vibration even within the ego realms. Like, you know, if you're resonating, you know, like, like if you're resonating at guilt and shame, which I was, then you'd be attracted to self-destruction, you know. so. Obviously, I was in so much fear and shame and guilt that my vibration was that, you know, I would automatically, unconsciously seek anything that was destructive and, and 
end stage addiction is you know you're, you're going to face death or organ failure doctors trying to save your life so that happened to me so I knew I was at the bottom bottom of the table you know like uh, guilt you know so I was like using food to kill myself I had chosen a career in the stock market you know where you typically people have a big ego are very aggressive and uh, full of addiction and there's no you know so I just unconsciously was choosing everything that would kill me. So, hence, you know, the, spirit, the rock bottom spiritual experience uh, went into 12 steps, but, you know, and the 12 steps have sorted out all the addictive problems, but, you know, the, on the to topic of surrender, you know, it's like the 12 steps isn't going to take you to like 100% surrender. Like uh, uh, Hawkins was, had reached the state of enlightenment. That's when the ego actually dies and you're just in this perpetual state. You could call it, I mean, it's called many things, uh, enlightenment, being in the eternal now, losing all sense of separation or limitation, and that's a constant. So he, he really talked about being in that. And you know, my favorite, he, one of his favorite things is like the prayer of St. Francis. You know, St. Francis is a mystic, you know, a Buddha is an enlightened teacher, a mystic as well. You know, to surrender all of the ego to to be uh, to be enlightened or to be in the God conscious now because it's only the ego that wants to be in control. Once that's completely surrendered, then you're you could you can call it one is a pure channel. One experiences no sense of limitation or separation. Uh, one is synchronistic. You know, like with the Course in Miracles, you because there's no ego blocking off the highest level of vibration or enlightenment then you'll be just one with the universe and the universe will use you as an instrument. So, so the 12 steps will definitely get you, you know, to a good level, good vibration, but it's, it won't get you to the level of a saint or an enlightened teacher or Buddha, because then you'd have to let go of all your attachments and all your ego. Uh, the Course in Miracles, you know, starts you off at a, starts you off, of course, as if you're an ego and talks to you like you're an ego, but then it goes on to say things like, in, in, in the real place, you'll experience something. Once you surrender all your ego, which is timeless, which is limitless, which is free of fear, and where no separation exists. So it's 365 lessons, i.e., what would that be? That would be enlightenment, full surrender of your ego. So the, the, the lessons which I really love doing, and which helped uh, Dr. Hawkins shift about 23 illnesses and helped him to get to the level of enlightenment. I knew that would take me to the next level uh, of surrender. And also my teacher Muji, who's also a teacher of enlightenment, more from the Eastern tradition of just, uh, sur you know, uh, he, he goes on about, and I had many mystical experiences, there is that which observes your thoughts. There's an observer of thoughts. So if you, if you just do this as a spiritual practice in the early days, you realize that thoughts are being observed. And there's actual, actually detached witnessing of thoughts. And so this starts the process of completely letting go of the attachment and the energy field of interest to the ego thought system being who one is. Yeah. Yeah, so then you start to experience, no, the, you, it's a spiritual experience. You realize that the source is actually limitless, timeless, eternal, and it's always here. And so let's go of that tendency to always be locked into the field of ego thought. And so you start to... One of my favorite lessons from A Course in Miracles, uh, because it's really going on. These are some of my favorite lessons from A Course in Miracles, which are at the level of enlightenment. If you go to a 12-step group, you wouldn't hear this. Like, I'm not, a I'm not a body, I'm free, for I am as God created me. So that's releasing one of the most biggest attachments within the ego to be obsessed about the body and its mortality and being identified with the limits of the body so that uh, and also one of the very first lessons in A Course in Miracles is all my thoughts are meaningless all my thoughts are meaningless right yeah they have no value yeah they're unimportant this is very very critical for releasing the ego because if you think your thoughts are important then you'll always be going back to the ego for referencing of how you should deal with your life. You'll never let go. So really, the thing that blocks 
one of the things that blocks enlightenment or just being in that 100% surrendered place is uh, attachment to thoughts. You see, so, so, the, so these, these things that, you know, the enlightened teachers, the Course of Miracles, allowed me to release the sense of separation and limitation engendered by being overly identified with thinking. And so you, 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 like St. Francis said, what you're looking for, because he's a mystic, uh, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. So when in the ego, you're looking for something outside of yourself to be the source of salvation. But actually what you're looking for, the place the ego looks out, but what you're looking for is where you're looking from. So prior to the thoughts, before the thoughts, deeper inward, is uh, what we're really looking for, that, that sense of spiritual enlightenment. Or in the last line, I love the last line of the prayer of St. Francis, it's in dying that we're born to eternal life. So what has to die for us to be, in the, well, what has to die and be completely surrendered in order to be in that limitless eternal space all the time? And that's the death of, of the ego. You see, so uh, so Sir Francis had experienced that level of spiritual awareness. So that was the thing, and you know, I I had major illnesses leave me, uh, and uh, like blanket, you know, I remember the day that the blanket of fear uh, was like taken off me, and you just go up to these higher vibrations. In terms of um, being an instrument or or a channel, uh, then. He, it's the you know the course of, doing the 365 lessons in a course in miracles. Um, yeah, other teachers of enlightenment. I, I really like Muji, and we'll be going later on today. Uh, I have many videos on you, my YouTube channel called the Observer, the Observer Tool, and they they sort of guide you in how to do the practice of being in the detached obs obs observation of thoughts, and being in that space prior to thoughts, and that releases the habitual addiction to being in the field of thoughts and so this opens up a more limitless experiencing of self. Um, this, is the, this is more or less the highest vibration. Once you've dissolved, because when you're attached to your thoughts in your body as a sense of self, that's the limited self or the ego self. So that, that sense of separation, I'm a separate individual in here, there's no spaciousness or sense of oneness and limitless connection. That, that, to the extent that one is identified with the ego, one's vibration drops, you know, and it's very much more like the ego's trying to work things out, plan things for the future, is in fear, and that, the more you're identified with the ego, the more thinking you'll be doing, and the more the negative emotions will correlate with that, so you have more fear, more shame, more guilt, yeah. more control issues, more addictive issues, so that it sort of closes up, and it blocks off that infinite light and that infinite presence which is always here. So as you start to dissolve it, you know, the sense of light, and also correlating to, you know, surrendering, then, you know, the higher your, your level of surrender of the ego, i.e. the more your experience of limitation and oneness, and uh, no, no sense of uh, individuality, because the individual, individual, individual is the ego, so that disappears. So it's more like a, an infinite field, out of which creativity and channeling, channeling being an instrument of the divine, because there's no, you're an instrument of the divine because the individual has disappeared, you see, that's why it's not the individual trying to work things out, which is the thing, you know, like certain, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm for everything, there's different vibratory fields, like certain vibratory fields would be like, let's try and get, let's try and manifest something or get something, or chant for something, but that, would, for me, would be like a lower vibration because, you know, it's like, who, I mean, who is it? Because to, to want something means you're in a vibration of lack, you know, and a, and a vibration, and also the field of lack and trying to get something to fix something or to feel better miss, must mean you're not, you're not in the place of oneness and wholeness and at the infinite field of presence and joy and happiness. It means like something's missing. So I have to spend some time trying to get something before, with, and projecting that when I get that thing, then I will be okay. So it's just a lower vibration. Whereas when you're in the, all enlightened teachers say the same thing. I've checked them all, and they all say the same thing. 
if you ask them, like, do you need anything or want anything in this moment, they will say they don't need anything or want anything. Because they're whole, you see, they're in the place of the infinite. Yeah. And also at their place of the infinite, um, it, uh, th through surrendering of the ego and the fear and the need to be in control, you know, uh, uh, enlightened teachers report that everything is given because they're in, you know, they're, they're, they're in the field where they're synchronized or there's a, yes. it's like a, an unfolding of miracles uh, that's witnessed really. There isn't anyone there. It's the witnessing of the unfolding of miracles because the ego's not there or people who do spiritual work may go into those fields temporarily and then they witness the miraculous happen continuously, you know, like miracle after miracle after miracle, sign after sign, and it's just witnessed like the universe will orchestrate things far better when the ego's out of the way than when the ego's in the way. 